When you have negative memories from your past, parts of you stay stuck in the past and so they are frozen in time. So the younger version of you, your inner child, is still frozen in time and those parts of you cannot grow up. And so if you think about it, we are just big children living in adult bodies. Welcome back to another video. My name is Naomi and I help you find alignment by bridging the gap between where you are and where you want to be. And in this video, I'm going to share with you how to integrate a past memory. If you haven't seen my videos that I created about integration and healing, then you might want to check that out as well so that you can add the information from this video to the other uh, videos and the other information that I share there. So how to integrate your past memories. The steps that I'm going to share with you are inspired by a book that is called The Completion Process by Jules Swan. So even if you don't remember things from your past, you can remember them by using this process. So the first thing that you want to do to integrate a past memory is to feel your emotions. So you want to start with an emotional trigger. An emotional trigger is an emotional upset, something that makes you feel uncomfortable. You want to start there because that's an opportunity to integrate. Then you want to label that emotion. Figure out what it is, what you are actually feeling. And then you want to try to feel into that feeling and if there's any deeper layers within that feeling. Personally, I like to label it because then I know that this is what I'm feeling. So you can feel feeling sensations in the body, focus on those sensations. And then the next step is to validate the present feeling. And if this is all that you can do, and if this is all that you can remember from this video, I want you to start there. This is something that I apply in my own meditation practice. And I think they call it a somatic meditation practice, where you focus on whatever it is that is arising within your body, what you're feeling and experiencing. So the first step, you can call it emotional vipassana. So you explore the feeling. The next step is validate that feeling. And then maybe without asking this question, but maybe a memory will already come up. But if it doesn't come up, you want to ask yourself the next question. When was the first time I felt this way? And then you want the memory come up to you. So you don't want to mentally think about it. You don't want to mentally force it. You want to stay focused on the feelings and then the memory will come up. Sometimes there's no memory because sometimes you were too young to have a mental image. So for example, uh, you were a baby and your parents dropped you somewhere on the floor. Don't know. And, and in that moment, you, you are so young, you don't remember it, but your body does. Your body also remembers um, your experience. So um, that's why sometimes you don't have a specific memory. You also want to know that after eight years, your life experience that you have is a reflection of your first eight years of your life. So you might get a memory that you have experienced after eight years, but there's always an original memory or a original wound from the first eight years of your life. So if you are 12 or 16 years old, then sit with that memory. If that is the memory that comes up, if maybe you go into that memory, then later on you might actually get the experience or the memory from even earlier on. So that is possible. So after you have the memory, you want to experience the memory in first person perspective. So you are stepping into your inner child, the younger version of you. So you are again experiencing the memory from the first person perspective. And that is sometimes really hard because sometimes you're, you are so dissociated from that experience because it was too painful that you cannot really step into the inner child's perspective. And that is okay if that happens, but try it first. And if that doesn't seem to work, then it's okay if you experience the memory from your adult perspective. So if you can experience the memory from the inner child perspective, then you want to validate the emotions that the inner child is feeling. 
this is really important to stay focused on the feeling sensations. A lot of time, the only thing that you need to really experience integration is that the inner child needs to feel validated. The feeling itself needs to be validated because it feels seen, felt and hurt. And a lot of times your inner child doesn't want to be alone and wants just a hug. But after that, you want to step into adult perspective and then you want to experience the memory from your adult perspective. Then you can give your inner child the need that it has. So you don't want to think about it mentally again, you want to feel it. What does the inner child want? So it can be a support figure, like uh, maybe an angel. You can put any, anyone or anything in that memory to make the child feel safe. And I personally like to put my adult version in the memories, like the, um, the future version of me, the more healed version of me, and I put her in the memory. And so I can um, really feel into her and um, make her and reassure her that she is okay and she's going to be okay. A lot of times what I notice is that you really need to be present with her emotions. And um, it might take some time before your inner child sometimes trusts you or before your inner child really feels uh, seen. And your inner child can feel seen, not just by looking at her, but seen emotionally. There's a difference there. You want to say the words like, I am here with you. I'm unconditionally present with you. Um, I'm open to hear what you have to say. These are words that you can say to that inner child. A lot of times your inner child wants to feel safe and connected. The worst thing about pain is when you are in your pain alone. So make sure that that younger version of you feels connected and supported and not alone. Sometimes your inner child needs your mother and that's all you need. Sometimes your father and it depends on the memory or the wound that you have. And maybe you don't want your parents there and you want a support figure. And that can be an angel or someone that you look up to, someone that makes you feel safe. I also felt into a memory where I needed to integrate myself. So my younger version of me, the inner child, she needed integration. So she needed to sit down with herself and feel connected to herself. And she needed to not abandon herself. So I was integrating in this present moment and the inner child in my memory was also integrating in that moment. So that is something that I felt that I needed in that specific memory, just an example. Um, but you can also like, you can be really creative in getting your inner child's needs met. You can give it a pony, a, a, a gift. You can just change the whole memory if that is what your inner child needed. And I know it might feel fake because you think that it already happened. So um, I cannot change something about it anymore. But you can change it because you are going back in time in a way while you're focusing on your emotions, while you're getting back into that memory and while you're feeling into that version of you, you can actually give it what it needed. And so that part of you will find a resolution with the past. And it's not so much about that the whole memory changed, it's, it is more about the being present with the emotions and the feelings. So if you can help your inner child to feel safe and feel different because you give it the need that it had, then it will integrate and then it will create resolution. And you can do this with every memory that comes up and then you want to wait for relief. And I also explained that in other videos that your emotions will naturally change if you stay present with the emotion. So when the inner child gets what it needed in that past memory, then it will feel relieved. If it doesn't feel relieved, then you have to stay with your inner child. Then give it other things that it needed. You might want to ask the inner child if there's something else, if there's something more, is there something more that the inner child needs to tell you? And maybe it will get you then to another memory. And then you want to work with that memory and walk through the same steps. And also again, you want to wait for relief. You cannot push this process. You cannot 
force it, then you won't really experience integration. So you have to sit with yourself as long as you need to and as long as your inner child needs to, to feel validated. And after you have done this step and after you um, experienced relief, you can go through more additional steps that you can find in the completion process, but you might already feel relieved and you have understood your inner child and the experience that you had. And so you might be done after you felt relief. But in the book, you can get your inner child to a safe haven and create distance between the memory and your present self. So um, you might want to check that out if you are interested in that, but this is something that you can already do. You can do this yourself, so this is easy for you to do in a way, but sometimes the memory and the emotions that come up are so intense that you cannot stay present and that you are going to distract yourself. The ego is trying to keep itself safe, so it's going to distract itself from the memory and from the emotions. And if that happens, then you need a physical person with you to walk you through that process, because then that person can keep you um, focused and present and it can hold space for you and this is pretty common if you feel um, you cannot get into the memory because it feels too unsafe and you need to feel seen by someone in your physical life right now so to experience any relief and any integration the first two steps are the most important emotional vipassana and then validate the present feeling sometimes that's all you need if you need more, go into the memory. And then you can actually integrate the memory from the past. And then the inner child can grow up and live with you in the present moment. Now, what is interesting to know is that when you can't remember your whole childhood, then that means that you are split or fragmented. Your consciousness is fragmented. And we all have that to a different degree. Some people have that more and some people have that less. It is not a natural state for human beings, but we all have it. So it's normal if you have it. I have it too. I don't remember my whole childhood either, um, but I have been able to get a lot of memories back and that feels really good. And then you can actually finally move on with your life because you have been able to let go of your past. I know it's not fun to hear that your consciousness is split, but this is what happens subconsciously and that is okay. It is just you being hurt and you have experienced pain. This is what we all experienced. So don't feel ashamed if you feel this way, if you don't remember your whole childhood. Also remember that healing happens in layers. So when you start to integrate, you start with the layer that comes up first, the emotional trigger that you have in the present moment. So the more you do this, the more layers will get resolved and integrated and then you get into deeper layers. And then you can get into the wounds that you experience in the first eight years of your life. They might already come up, but if memories come up from eight years and older, know that there are more layers that you probably are going to work with the more you do this. So if you are not able to let go of your past, of past experiences, then that means that there are parts of you, aspects of you that need integration, they need resolution. You can mentally decide to let things go and they can work sometimes, but if there is a part of you that needs to feel heard, felt and seen, then it is going to feel like you're going to abandon that part of you. And you can know that if you can't seem to let go of your past, if the emotional triggers keep coming up. So you can mentally decide to let things go. And if that is in alignment with you and if your emotions agree with you, if you can literally feel that you're done and that you can let it go, then you can actually decide to just let things go. If there's something else, that you feel you cannot let go of, then there's an aspect of you that is stuck in the past or frozen in time. And then you wanna apply this process to that aspect of you and to that memory. So a lot of times there is still a need that your inner child has 
that needs to be met. And maybe you can do that within the memory and maybe you need a physical person in your adult life right now to meet that need in the present moment, to create a resolution with the past. So that is also a way to create resolution as well. Find people that can meet those needs for you. Because you might never have someone that was able to meet that need for you in the past. You can have trauma from things that were done to you, but you can also have trauma from things that are not done to you, which means that you had a need that wasn't met. And you don't even remember or you don't even know that you didn't got that because you just didn't get it. But it was a human need to have. Maybe validation, maybe a feeling of belonging, for example. So that's another way to look at your trauma as well. So check out the videos below to add this information to the information that I share in those videos. Also make sure to download my free shadow work guide below. You can add this information in this video to the process that I explain in there as well. If you like the information that I shared in this video, then give this video a thumbs up for me and subscribe to the channel below if you like to see more and then you will see me in my next video. Namaste.